very much for being with us. So left-wing candidates emerged with a clear lead in the run-up to the elections uh, in Mexico this weekend. One poll giving Andres Manuel López Obrador as much as a 20-point advantage. Whoever wins has a major battle against crime. Mexico saw 30,000 murders over the past year. It's an election marred by violence. Since campaigning in Mexico began in September, there have been more than 500 attacks on politicians. 130 of these were killings, and among those dead are more than 40 candidates and shortlisted candidates for state and local elections. Several have already been killed this week, days before Mexicans go to the polls. Among those, Emigdio Lopez Avendano, who was running as a state representative for Oaxaca. Justice needs to be done for him and his children. He has very small children, not even two years old. Victims are from parties across the political spectrum. Though few cases have been solved, authorities suspect drug gangs are to blame. No wonder security is a priority in this election. There were 30,000 murders in the country last year, the deadliest in its modern history. I want another life for my children, so they don't have to live through what we're going through now. Murders so far in 2018 have increased 21 percent over the same period last year. The presidential candidate in second place says homicides are a direct product of Mexico's 12-year war on drugs. Politicians say they will make peace a priority, but the methods differ. The front runner has said he'll give some criminals amnesty, while the last placed candidate has proposed chopping off the hands of corrupt officials. Some 30,000 posts are at stake when Mexicans go to the polls on Sunday. So the elections this weekend, let's get uh, the analysis now. We're joined by uh, Amalia Pulido, who's a political scientist, examining many of the issues uh, currently facing the Mexican authorities. Thank you very much for joining us. I'd like to start by asking um, how you think crime is shaping this election. Hi, thanks for having me. So yeah, um, first, to, uh, it's it's. I mean, we should say that this is the biggest election in in the modern history of Mexico. So we are electing uh, more than eighteen thousand positions. So just to imagine how big this election will be. And then, yeah, violence is not a new event in Mexico. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there have been like uh, assassinations against politicians. But what we are seeing in in this uh, electoral cycle, it's uh, it's pretty bad. So we have more than one hundred and twenty uh, politicians that uh, who got killed. Killed, and uh, we have like uh, around 50 candidates who also were killed. One of these candidates were, uh, was a national candidate. All the other candidates are from the local level, especially the municipal and the state level. And there are like uh, several reasons to to understand or how to understand this uh, wave of uh, focalized violence against candidates. So one of these reasons is that uh, criminal organizations are trying to break the status quo in some of these regions. And also, there, I mean, it, it will be wrong to uh, criminalize all the victims. We know that uh, some of these candidates were not willing to negotiate with criminal organizations, so that's another uh, reason for this uh, wave of violence. And the last one, maybe, it's the emergence of new criminal organizations in, in Mexico. And these new criminal organizations seeking to control territories, and one of the strategies they have is to kill uh, candidates. So generally speaking, these criminal organizations have two big strategies. One is a collusion or making uh, agreements with politicians, and the other one is confrontation. The, this strategy is the one that we are seeing in this electoral cycle in Mexico. Indeed, and it's very disturbing. Those figures you've outlined for us, uh, Amalia, are very disturbing to, to absorb there the, the scale of what's been going on. Now, there's a poll that says there's been a swing uh, to the left, and the left-wing candidate has a lead of some 20 points. Is this about politics or is it about a feeling that there needs to be a change? So I think it's both. Uh, one of the reasons, and, and a lot of citizens uh, will decide their vote based on these uh, angry against the, the former dominant party, the PRI. So that's one of the reasons we're seeing this switching to the left, especially to Andres Manuel López Obrador. And of course, as you said, another reason is uh, that 
uh, the citizens want to change the, the political system. And of course, violence is one of these uh, is one of the main issues in Mexico. If you ask uh, Mexican citizens, uh, I think the, the first uh, worry in Mexico is it's, it's, it's security and crime. So definitely, uh, this will be reflect uh, this uh, coming Sunday in the polls. And if, as we think will happen, Obrador is is elected. What will his approach be to the issue of crime? Will he negotiate with the, the criminal uh, fraternity? I don't think he's, he's going to negotiate with criminal organizations because that will be uh, in terms of the rule of law and justice. I think that's not possible. Uh, I think amnesty has a bigger implication and like uh, more connotations about what is what is he wants to do. And unfortunately, in the second debate, in the second uh, presidential debate where candidates uh, discuss how to fight criminal organizations and increase security, uh, we just heard like good diagnostic about the security situation in Mexico, but we didn't we didn't hear like any specific strategy uh, about security. So unfortunately, uh, we haven't seen like uh, the specific policies to fight organized crime and to uh, reduce the levels of violence that we are seeing in Mexico. Emilio Polito, thank you very much indeed for your analysis. I uh, hope we speak over the weekend to get more on uh, how the election uh, pans out. And uh, according to the polls, of course, so one man uh, with a 20-point lead uh, campaigning. Wrapping up now. And we have more analysis on the situation in Mexico to come between now and midnight Paris time. Thanks again to Amelia Polito joining us there from Mexico.